Taxes, Wills, and Trusts, Chapter 8, Part 2. We're going to begin with Section B and discuss the intentional omission of a child. Intentional disinheritance is uh, permitted in every state in the U.S. except for Louisiana. Disinheritance by the first parent to die is, is actually very common um, in the U.S. Parents typically favor leaving their assets to the surviving spouse. And there is an assumption, of course, that the surviving spouse will take care of their children. So the bottom line here is that testators can omit their children. from their wealth. But if the circumstances suggest that the omission may have been unintentional, the law has certain safeguards to protect children and spouses from unintentional omissions. It's Section C, protection against unintentional omissions. The statutes that protect children from unintentional omissions are called pre-termitted heir statutes. Pre-termitted heir statutes. While those that protect the spouse from unintentional omission are called pre-termitted spouse statutes. Both of these types of statutes address the issue that arises due to what we call the stale will problem. Stale will problems arise because there was a change in circumstance that occurred after the first will was executed. Despite these changed circumstance, the testator does not update the will before they die. The law assumes that the omission was unintentional. So let's talk about the circumstances that give rise to the pretermitted statutes. First, if a will is premarital, in other words, it was executed before the testator got married to the surviving spouse. If a spouse is omitted from a premarital will, then that spouse takes the intestacy share. The will still gets probated and otherwise stays intact. What about the unintentional disinheritance of a child? Well, this scenario typically occurs when a child was born after the will is executed. So most states require that the child is born, the omitted child is born after the execution of the will. So where the testator has a child after executing their will and dies without revising or revoking that will, then there is a presumption that the testator meant to include the child in their will, but just didn't have time or forgot to amend their will before they died. Now, this presumption can be rebutted um, one of three ways, typically. The first is that 
evidence can be presented that the failure to provide for that child was actually intentional. But that intent must be evident from the face of the will. The second uh, way that the rebuttable presumption can be challenged is if the testator provided for the child outside of the will and also had the intent that that transfer would be a substitute for the inheritance. So there must be both an outside transfer and that transfer must be a substitute transfer. The third is that the testator had one or more children with the surviving spouse and devised all of their estate to the surviving spouse who was the parent of that omitted child. So if the presumption is not rebutted, then like the, uh, like the pretermitted spouse, the pretermitted child gets the intestate share that they would have gotten had the will gone through intestacy. And with that, we conclude our material for chapter eight. So just to recap or review, in chapter eight, we went over intentional omissions, and we discussed what happens when there is an intentional omission of a spouse or when the amount provided through a will does not meet a certain minimum standard. We also talked about intentional um, disinheritance of a child. We then talked about unintentional disinheritance of both the spouse and the child. And we said essentially this occurs when events or circumstances happen after the will is executed. And the court assumes that they omitted the spouse or the child because they didn't go back and update their will. And we said that by and large, the children, the omitted spouse and omitted child will take their intestacy share. And with that, we conclude the content for chapter eight.